Hey, it's Brent from Grey House Studio. If you saw our video that we posted last, you'll see that we're on a quest to save a little money uh, on our energy bill. We figured out using uh, Sense Monitor some things that were costing us a lot of money, and then I also realized our air conditioner kicks on every 15 minutes in the summer, and it takes about 15 minutes to cool off, and then it kicks off and kicks back on. So it's on nonstop. And when we got a new roof, I started looking into radiant barriers. My understanding was that a radiant barrier was something that was on the sheathing that you could install and it looked like foil. So if you build a new house, I see them a lot in Texas on spec houses, kind of nicer spec houses, they'll put radiant barriers. Um, my understanding was that that was something that you had to put on before the roof. So I was looking into it and I realized that most of them that are put on with the sheathing don't actually do anything because the radiant barrier requires an air gap. And the purpose of it is to reflect the radiant energy instead of conducting straight through that radiant barrier with no air gap. The point of this video really is to look at the facts, which are the sensors that I have on the electric box and the sensors in the air ducts, I can see the temperature changes in the attic, the garage, and the air duct, and then see how often my air conditioner kicks on and off. That's really all I care about. If none of that changes, then the radiant barrier doesn't work in my eyes, and I really think that if I can decrease the temperature in the attic, then the air conditioner will have to kick on significantly less, because I've noticed that the air ducts get hot, so in the summer when the air kicks on, it's blowing 80 plus degree air into the house for a minute or two before it finally starts to cool off. If the air cycles on for 15 minutes, it's blowing hot air for the first two minutes, then it finally cools down for about five minutes. If I can get the attic temperature from 140 to the temperature it is outside, which might be 100 on a really hot day, I think that will be a win. So we'll look at those sensors and see what the bill looks like. Everything I see is people trying to sell you on this kind of magic thing that happens when they put it in your attic and it saves you half of your energy bill and they can't really tell you why, it's just if you hire them to install this magic technology called a radiant barrier, then it will save you tons of money and eventually it will pay for itself and they don't tell you how much the product costs, how much they're charging you to install it, it's just a flat fee and they tell you you'll recoup the money eventually. I did some research and stumbled across ecofoil.com and they focus on the DIY aspect of radiant barriers which is really helpful because they actually focus on the material, the radiant barrier and tell you what it does, how to install it and what the price is. So you can get it, install it yourself or I guess you could buy it and then pay somebody to install it. I decided to go the route of installing it myself and I got a ton of it. Basically you measure from the bottom, make sure there's an air gap so that the air can move through the attic without being blocked. What we don't want to do is completely seal the attic and create moisture issues because it's super humid here. So I taped the seams, it makes it look nice, but know that there's an air gap at the bottom and the top and the point is to cover as much space as you possibly can with the radiant barrier so that that radiant heat that's coming through our black shingles that's like 40% hotter than the outside air is reflected back into that air gap. Once I've measured that two or three inch gap and measured the top, then I just staple the top corner, unroll it, staple the other top corner, and then hand staple at all the studs moving down and then hand staple the bottom and throw a couple in the middle. And then I move on to the next one and I put them right next to each other. It's not important to be perfect, it's just a matter of covering as much surface area as possible. And then I'll tape it to clean it up. Again, the tape isn't to create a tight air seal where nothing can get from the behind it to in front of it. It's mostly to 
clean up the edges and make it look nice. That's also why this radiant barrier is white on one side and silver on one side. The silver is reflecting it back out and the white just looks nice inside. So here's some data from the sensors I put in the air duct and the garage. Uh, the humidity actually gets up to like 80% because the air conditioner's never on long enough to lower the humidity in the house, but it has to come on so frequently that it's never quite dehumidifying the house. So that's a bit concerning. If I kick over to the, if I kick over to the attic, in the same month of September, you can see that the temperature will fluctuate at night when the sun's down. It will almost get down to the temperature that the outside air is at, but during the daytime, as soon as the sun comes up, you can see at like 9 a.m., 8 a.m., the temperature just skyrockets to 120. Now that we're in November and we've installed the radiant barrier, the temperature hovers right around the ambient temperature outside. So if you measure the temperature in the shade, that would be about the temperature in the attic. You can see in this video when I measure the temperature of the sheathing that I left bare to test the difference, it's measuring between like 92 and 95. And then if I kick over to the radiant barrier, it's measuring 78, which is roughly about the temperature outside. You can see uh, based on the sensors reading, the overall attic temperature is about the same. And then the temperature in the air ducts fluctuates significantly less. So that experience I was having where the air would kick on and it would be 85 degrees for three or four minutes before finally getting down to 75, 70, upper 60s. Now it stays more consistent and when the air kicks on, it becomes the temperature it's supposed to be, the condition temperature much quicker. And I think that makes it dehumidify a bit quicker. If you find this helpful, definitely hit the like button down below to let me know and leave us a comment if you have any questions. There's a ton of videos on radiant barriers. I was interested in showing the actual effect it has in our attic and on the temperature inside our house and the air ducts. If you found this content helpful, be sure to subscribe to our channel, Greyhouse Studio, and check out our blog, greyhousestudio.com, for more content like this.